Great. Red Green Adventure. So this is a deck that felt very reasonable last time we played it. The adventure decks in this format are headlined by Edgewall Innkeeper. When you cast a creature that has adventure, draw a card. One thing that this archetype really gained in Theros that I liked a lot is this here first I wrote in games. So it makes a 1-1. One -one puts three counters on something and then draws two cards if you control a creature with draws two cards you control a creature with power four or more um i i like this card a lot in this archetype just because it allows us to it allows us to have an additional way to generate card advantage past just the innkeeper so having two different ways to keep the cards flowing means you keep the cards flowing more often Last time we played this deck, Clothis God of Destiny also felt very reasonable. So this is a card that um, can occasionally ramp us with Fabled Passage, but in general, we're playing this card because it allows us to provide a consistent flow of life gain against aggressive decks while providing a consistent flow of damage. That's kind of hard to take off the table against controlling decks. All right, let's go ahead and hop on. What's our What's our rank? We're at 394 with nine days left. I think this deck's pretty reasonable. I'm gonna go ahead and take a crack at it on on the ladder. I think I think we need to have one more good streak probably to lock lock top 1200 for the season. How would I board with this against Esper Dance? I have no idea. Cut the bad cards, bring in the good ones. How is that Teamer Fires deck I just saw? Well, you can go into the deck queue on my website to find the exact deck list for it, and I've not played it yet because uh, it's still in the deck queue waiting to be played. I think I'm bottoming that. We'll play a second innkeeper here. Deck for one. Tefafa. So we get to play this, shock this in, draw a couple cards when we get rimmed. We get to attack Tefri for one. If they have Shatter next turn, these both drew cards at least, so that's nice. If they don't have Shatter next turn, the Bone Crusher Giant gets to pick up a couple more cards. We'll be in a really good spot. Anytime, anytime your innkeepers get to draw multiple cards, usually pretty far ahead. was really kind of hoping to draw an untapped land there. I think my plan, because I have so many adventure cards in my hand, I just want to get more, I want to get more card draw off the innkeepers that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and draw a card. And getting, getting this into play is good because it means that if they shatter me, I draw a card from the shatter now. And then next turn I can go second innkeeper, bone crusher, draw two, smack you for eight. Just keep the cards flowing. Time wipe, yep. Hey, G Goat, thanks for the 27 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, so they're almost assuredly time wiping me next turn, right? So I just like go land pass. Is that crazy? I feel like that's not crazy.
I guess I want to... I'm going to put... That sounds good, PhD. I'm going to put this into play because it's my ninth power, which means if they don't take something off the board, Bone Crusher plus an attack kills them. I mean, they're all they're all just playing to win, Doof Monster, right? They're all none of all of those people up there who said they want the process to decide who gets the nomination, none of them have a realistic chance at winning, at winning the most votes. Sanders Sanders is going to win the most votes. Almost assuredly. Anybody want to draw five cards this turn? Is that better than drawing extra cards? It does plus three damage. It's probably better than drawing extra cards. So would I rather draw more cards with this Bone Crusher Giant or Ember Cleave this turn? I think I'd rather Ember Cleave this turn. I'm hitting for six this turn if I do that. It's putting them to four versus seven. Ceratops is great here. Spellbreaker is great here. Um, Domri's ambush seems a little bit less than stellar. What do I, what do I want to trim? Is this Paradise Druid? Paradise Druid doesn't seem like an unreasonable cut. Maybe this many Ember Cleaves is not necessarily great. Just like trim around the edges here. I'd rather just keep all the cleaves. They side an Archon. Sometimes. Maybe it's worth keeping some Domery's Ambush for Archons. I don't know. Like a pair in. Let's try that. You want to cut all the cleaves against control? Not that I like that idea. I mean, obviously I don't like that idea. That's why I didn't do it. That's probably a better answer. I think trimming cleave is fine. I think cutting all of them is a mistake. I think you want some amount of that effect to just win the game. Perfect. Hey, thanks for the interior support from Raw. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. The ambush does hit Planewalker. Sleeping in a pair is fine. Yeah, like, it's just it's just like Splinter Twin, right? It was often right to trim some copies of Splinter Twin in really interactive matchups, but you always want to leave at least some in to mise them. 
I think, I think trimming cleave is fine, just like trimming splinter twin was fine. Hey, they gave me another 1 1 for down the line. That's exciting. What is your quest? I seek the face. Da -da -da -da. Oh, oh, and I seek the Tefri. Crunch. Houmph. Houmph. I don't conquer me, bro. Jeevan, Jeevan, conquer. Crunch, crunch. Correct, yes. Questing beasts cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less. I don't understand, Jet. The orange Cheeto told me told me walls work. The wall can't even block a legendary mythical beast? I don't understand. I approve of eating Tefri its revenge for let's have you ate our sandwiches out of the fridge. You're not, you're not wrong. Hmm. Bunch of banishing lights. I wonder if because they're on the banishing light thirst of meaning build, I should probably bring in. I feel like I should probably bring in um some copies of the get rid of an enchantment card that we have. Yeah, Mystic, Mystic Repeal, that's the one. I have a pair of those in the board. All right, they're at four. Untapped land. Cleave ho! Dead you. Again, have to do this during my main phase because we're currently playing Hearthstone. Remember, remember when someone said you cut cleave? Don't cut your cleaves, chat. Don't, don't do it. Don't cut your cleaves. Don't cut your cleaves, chat. Don't, don't do it. Hootie's so excited. Hootie's just, just really into this. Man, that felt good. I think I want another Ceratops. I really, I really like stuffing blue white in a box. Let's put a third Ceratops on the board. We're probably gonna play against more blue white today. Card's kind of great. We have seven ways to destroy enchantments on the board. That's a lot. That's a lot of ways to destroy enchantments. Do I need these return to natures? It's just thrashy boy enough. I kind of feel like just thrashy boys probably enough, huh? All right, come on, green red. Let's win like one or two more and call it a day. Yeah, red blood's not really a common archetype. Return, return to nature is better against Cat Oven, but Cat Oven hasn't been super popular, he said, before he immediately cues into Cat Oven. Pretty good. I'm good to go. Second Love Struck Beast token. Tapped land on two. And then start playing Love Struck Beast on three. Oh, 
I don't know. Like, we have four Questing Beasts and four Ember Cleaves, so I don't know if I'm that worried about the cat decks to begin with. Did I Twitter? Or maybe I didn't. Totally didn't. Thank you. I discorded, right? Yeah, I tagged people on Discord. Uh, I think with that play, we just go ahead and stomp this and then attack them for two. Yeah, are they are they just like playing Jeskai Fires with just like their blue white hate cards in the main deck? Maybe maybe that means they don't they're not playing Definite Clarion in the main. They could also be a Jeskai Brew. They don't necessarily have to be playing a stock deck. Do I stomp my own token to kill their Bone Crusher Giant? I feel like the answer is no, because I want to play Lovestruck Beast. I guess I guess I could stomp this and then Rimrock my other one. That's probably the play. Because, like, playing Lovestruck Beast isn't very good if they have a Tefri as a follow-up. Well, no, they're killing... Their Tefri would bounce my token, Brad. And then my Lovestruck Beast couldn't attack. Is how, is how that would play out. If I had another 1-1 one, one in my hand, I think I would just let their giant happen and play my Lovestruck Beast. But because I explicitly don't have a backup 1-1, one, one, I think that's not a good play. Yeah, like here. Huh? I don't know. I don't know how close this is. The fact they hit the fifth land this turn probably means we're dead. I assume they've got some biggity bomb side note. Hey, Ben. Thanks for the three months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Do you also have a Cavalier? You do. If they attack, we'll block here, obviously. Take five, six, seven. They didn't discard the card in their hands. So that means they have a third bomb here. That trade also means they're going to have a cab to get back with this uh, Elspeth Conqueror death here, which sucks for us. Yeah, super dead. He did needed to hit our lands early there. He just didn't, and we died. Uh, repeal's great. Thrashing Marantanon's great. Domri's Ambush seems less than great. Boarding. Boarding with these adventure decks is tough because you have to keep enough adventure cards in to get, get stuff going. Maybe Paradise Druid is just the trim. She's kind of my go-to cut. 
Yeah, but like the problem is, Brad, I agree the card's not that great, but like then my innkeeper's not good. Like I only have 11 adventure cards, so I feel like I really can't trim more than like one adventure card. Maybe I could just do that. Like I feel like going below 10's a mistake. Yeah, maybe, maybe pivoting off of games is the answer that could let us fit Ceratops in and leave the other Paradise Druid in. That could be a reasonable, reasonable approach to take. I worry a bit without games about having enough cards to make, having enough things to let my Love Struck Beast attack consistently. Aether guys, put this on top of my deck, attack you for one. They just have a brazen borrower, bone crusher giant, sure. I mean, games is like slow, like it makes a four, four, right? Like, I know it draws cards too, but it, do it does more than that is the reason why it's good. Body is ready to get Clarioned. In for that one. If we don't get Clarioned, we get to put a sword in a Rimrack Knight next turn, so that's exciting. A glass half full didn't get Clarioned. Please just play a blocker. Please just play a blocker. Yeah, this is, this is a tough part about Lovestruck Beasts in this matchup. They're just so interactive. Really? Okay. Thanks, I guess. What's waving the sideboard for? Matchups where people are blocking and people have X1s. Yikes. I've got it. This is a good draw. I think I killed this so they can't instant speed sweep for me. Yeah, especially when they're playing Storm's Wrath instead of uh, Deafening Clarion. Like Storm's Wrath kills Questing Beast, which is a big deal. Kills Ceratops as well. The fact that they've had Conquer Death to exile our Clothis both times also has not been great. Maybe I just trim Clothis in this matchup. He's, he's actually very slow, right? And maybe maybe Clothis is actually the trim that I, I want. 
could see that. Want to draw a card here? Oh, I probably should have sent both of these at them because they're likely getting back at Tefri this turn, regardless, right? Yeah, I think I missed a point of damage. I should have should have sent my one ones at them because I think they only have Bone Crusher and Tefri in here, and I think they're pretty likely to get the get the Tefri. So mis misevaluation on my point with my attacks because I wasn't thinking about the Conqueror's death that was in play. They only binned one card there, okay. Am I dead? I think I'm dead, right? They bounce this, I take uh, 9, 16 exactly. I appear to be dead. Hope everybody's wearing their coat. Combo winter is cold. And they missed on board lethal, right? This is on board lethal, right? This is nine, seven. Deal. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Ember Cleave on here is 12. So they're dead to an attack with everything here because they have to block the adventure creatures and if they go block block this will be 12 minus 5 is 7 8 and if they go block block this is 8 on its own so they missed on board lethal and now we get to kill them and play game 3. Remember that play mistakes happen everywhere, even in the Mythic Ladder. Like, a lot there's a lot of people who like to be kind of rude. Like when we play the constructed events, they're like, ah, oh, look, the constructed event. They they made a mistake because you're playing the constructed event. It's like, well, mistakes kind of happen actual everywhere. Is this a spellbreaker matchup? Is this probably just an all haste creatures on deck matchup, isn't it? If I, what if I do this? Thrashy, Thrashy B is actually a little bit less appealing to me because they're playing Storm's Wrath instead of Deafening Clarion. Like, normally this is a threat you can play that, like, is more resilient to their sweeper, but that's not the case because of my opponent's card selection, right? Because they're all legendary, Stormy Waters, and drawing multiples of legendary cards tends to suck. It is super awkward here. So I have one untapped land in this hand before turn four. Obviously on four, the Fabled Passage is untapped. I suppose I can fetch with Fabled Passage on one for Mountain and then Forest, M Forest Castle come into play untapped. 
feel like it's crazy to mulligan this. The spells are like pretty good. If we if we draw more good spells, that's fine. The mana's awkward. We have good spells. If we draw a land, our mana's a little bit less awkward. I don't really need that at this point, right? Well, if you look at the deck list, Stormy, there's still four Chandras in the 75. Perfect. Four or five here. Play fires, because they always play fires on four. See if they have Storm's Wrath or just a Bone Crusher Giant. We've got a good amount of haste here, but the unfortunate thing is that like my opponent's still at 20 on turn four, so we've got a lot of work to do. Wow, they're playing Clarion and Storm's Wrath. That's scary. Crunch. Played 30 best of one matches and got cleaved 23 times. Sounds right. I mean, like, red aggro is pretty popular in the best of three ladder, and I assume it's better in best of one than it is in best of three. Could you expect that popularity to carry over in paper? People play paper standard. You want to like a pro tour? <laughs> As for like, can you predict X about my local metagame? No, no, I cannot. No, I have no idea what people plan to play at your local game store. You found Mono Red doesn't perform nearly as well on paper. I think that's not true. I think people enjoy playing it less on paper because you have to wait around a bunch when you play Mono Red on paper. So like, it's more boring to play Mono Red in person because you have to sit there with your, sit on your hands for like half your time. Hey, Frenzied Mage, thanks for the 25 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yep. Yeah, the, the ladder incentivizes you not to play well, but to try and hit streaks. All right, so this game's over.
I'm just surprised to hear that your store regularly fires standard. A lot of people I've talked to have said their store shops have had a hard time firing standard events consistently. Lots of lots of people play Paper Magic. It's just a lot of a lot of people that play Paper Magic play more casual formats on average. That's why things like Modern and Pioneer tend to be more popular because non-rotating formats with big card pools tend to be more casual. Tend to be more accessible for casual players so they can have a better chance of finding cards that they're attached to to play with. Let's find out what they're playing so we can sideboard. Looks like blue-white control. Good enough for me. We could, we could play a game here thanks to the London Mulligan, but is definitely not correct to uh, show them what we're doing. At a brief moment where I wanted to play paper at my LGS, went to Friday night, three people showed up for modern, all playing Tron. No one playing standard. Yikes. <laughs> well, that's, that's just... I... You could probably argue I should mulligan this hand, but I just got burned, so I'm going to keep this medium hand and hope to draw some spells. He said before he draws lands for the remainder of the game. So fun fact, I actually messed up there. So I should have, I should have played Fabled Passage on two so I could make a mana with it on three to play my Ceratops with haste. Actually a pretty big mistake, all things considered. Missed, missed five points of damage by not slowing down a little bit. Yep. Little, little things like that really add up. It's a very good draw. Innkeeper. Heart's Desire. Love Struck Beast here. Draw a card. Found some good spells at least. Shouldn't shouldn't have bragged about finding spells, chat. Our hubris will be our downfall. How brew friendly has the standard format felt? There are like there's over a dozen standard decks on my website, all of which I think are reasonable. From all these messages about standard not firing, I have to ask, is Arena to blame? No. I think, I think blaming Arena for standard events not firing is a good example of correlation does not equate to causation. I think, if anything, Arena is the reason that standard remains a format at all, rather than saying it's the reason that it's killing paper standard. Neo Mage, thank you for the 14 months and for the generous tier two at that. Welcome back. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday wherever you're at. <sighs> Questing Beast, Ceratops. Hey, how about another land chat? Is that fun? Are we having fun yet? I'm having fun. Magic's great. Definitely didn't mulligan into three and then flood out and die. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Thanks, I hate it. Ceratops. I mean, if they didn't have a second trawler, Ostin, we could, like, draw an adventure creature, draw a Ceratops and attack for a bunch and race a single trawler. Ember, Ember Cleave definitely makes you capable of racing a single trawler. Like, if they don't have particularly good cards in hand from there, we're fine. Yeah, I didn't shock the Tef because they'd just get it back. So shocking the Tef was just very incorrect. Nah, honestly, losing a bunch with bad decks in the ladder is probably a net positive overall. Playing in playing in the MCQ events are like they're pretty bad expected value. And on, honestly, the the fact that like Wizards made it impossible for MPL players to be like have opinions on things kind of killed any incentive that I had to like try and work at stuff because like i literally just couldn't do my job if i was if i qualified for the mpl or i'd get kicked out right away so like like the the inspiration to try and qualify really isn't there at one point i thought i might make the effort to qualify because it would be fun but the fun is outweighed, the potential fun is outweighed by the fact that just like, I wouldn't get any prize money or I'd get kicked out right away, even if I made the effort to qualify. The great numbers, and that's not true, Gengar. It's a, it's a, it's purely a gamble, just like everything else in Magic the Gathering. So if, if you do well and have a long run, you do get good viewer numbers for the MCQ. However, if you do poorly and have a bad run, your viewer numbers to start are very bad and actually reduce my average viewer count for the day. Or for the, the month or week or whatever you want to call it. What is the MPL? The MPL is the Magic Premier League. Yes, in a bet in a best case scenario, the viewer numbers are good. Having having played a lot of red black decks, these girl matchups always felt pretty good for them. Maybe, maybe we'll have a good run with Esper Control later today. Climb back up a little bit, but... Feels like Grohl's gonna end in disappointment today. The last time we played this deck, it felt kind of okay. Today, today is not one of those days. Huh? I 
think I'm just trimming games here. That seems fine. Sure. Hey, glad you're liking it, mate, Sue. Hey, thanks for the two entire years of support, Dinky Dorko. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Gobble, gobble. I don't want to attack here because if I attack, they trade and like they have a food from the innkeeper to bring it back. So it's not very profitable for me. So I think I'd rather hold on to this until we can find an ember cleave or something to get it passed with it. Maybe go wide around them. This at least blocks Butcher, and then if they go to kill it, we can kill the Witch's Oven, which is nice. Clothis. Clothis kind of keeps us at parity with the cat in the meantime. Gains us a little bit of life while the cat bounces around. Yep. Played another bad brew this morning in Pioneer. Had the expected result. Format is not particularly brew friendly anymore. A format a format where like Niv Mizzet and Big Red are like the best decks is pretty brew friendly because mid-range decks and decks like that are easier to attack. And a format where you're just getting like combo kill by miscellaneous things and there's just random aggro decks everywhere to be competitive. Just not gonna have a good time. OKC Thunder, thanks for the 12 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Kind of, kind of expecting like the next month or so of Pioneer decks to mostly be, hey, this was bad. As the as the takeaway. Have to work through a bunch of the decks that I accepted that looked good at the start of the format, but then ended up ended up not being great with what there was to do the format. Probably, probably gonna have to buy moto tickets sometime soon. We've basically been losing $10 a day, which is another part of the reason why I'm upping the cost for it. 20, $25 to play a deck is fine when we're like getting our money back part of the time, but when we're almost always setting $10 on fire, that's not good enough. Would Cinder Binds be of any value in the second? Instead of me telling you you're wrong, tell me why you're right. What problem do you think you're solving by adding Cinder Binds to this deck? I'm just playing all my stuff out. Our chance here is to like maybe go wide. Clothis. Clothis again, keeping us at parity with the cats, or at least we're not dying. We're just like staying about the same. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is really scary. Played against Torbrain with Cinder Vines today. That's that's sweet.
This is uh, the part of the game where they end our entire career, right? Again, if I time you out for lazy card recommendations, I'd encourage you to think critically about your card recommendations. Tell me, what are you solving? How are you solving by adding that? Like, like here, this game, this game, for example, like if I have a fucking Cinder Vines, how does Cinder Vines help me win this game? It doesn't, right? Like identifying what's actually beating me in this game and then solving that problem is more important. We're dying to Priest of the Forgotten Gods. We're dying to Mayhem Devil. Like Cinder Vines doesn't actually solve the problem, which is again, why the best way to figure out how you want to change how you want to change your decks isn't say, okay, I want to answer this thing. It's to say, look at the matchup and go, okay, in this matchup, how, how do I lose? What cards matter? And how do I solve the problems to fix the things that matter that I'm losing the game? So yeah, Cinder Vines doesn't really do that. And even if Oven, even if I look at it and I conclude Oven is the thing that's beating me, using Cinder Vines to spend three mana to kill their one mana card is really clunky and inefficient. It's really incredibly slow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and shelve this one. This was, this is again why it's important to play more games with decks and I have to talk about things, you know, just because we do well with the deck doesn't mean it's good. Just because you do poorly with the deck doesn't mean it's bad. You really need to play more games and get bigger sample sizes. Even once we've played a deck two or three times, only having played a deck for, you know, a dozen matches is still relatively small, all things considered. Um, yeah, the we played Green White Adventures yesterday and it felt okay. Or Ironin Games was good there. The big standout between the Green White Adventures deck that we played yesterday and this green red one was that this build had a lot more one ones in it. Love Struck Beast at many times, especially in the Jeskai matchup. The the green red deck had a really hard time making this card not suck, it felt like. In order to make this card an aggressive threat, we need to play more 1-1s one than this build is playing, and I just feel like I can't reasonably do that in these colors without playing some really low quality cards. So overall, I felt like we kind of got outclassed in a lot of those games. I felt like the good things about our deck were like Ember Cleave. And at the end of the day, we just ended up being a worse Ember Cleave deck than like the mono red deck that's running around. That's obviously very good. One of the established best decks in the format. So overall, I don't think this is something I would play again. Similar to the Grawl deck yesterday, I feel like after playing some games with it, we really just came up a little bit too short overall. Things like Love Struck Beast not quite being good enough compounded with... Uh, or other cards just not lining up well into what other people are doing. Just didn't feel like it would be reasonable. What would I make change to this deck? So to make the first change I would make to this deck is I would click on it here. And then there's this button over here, second from the right. And then you got to confirm it. And then I think it's about perfect from there. And then if you wanted to play something like that again, I'd recommend registering a bunch of basic mountains. All right. At any rate, I'm going to hit a quick ad roll. While we get set up to get flipped over to the next one. When we get back, we got a bit of a brew here to go exploring with. We've got some black white enchantments. We'll be back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.